Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking about CSS media queries. And media queries allows us to display a different style if the user is on, say, a desktop or a tablet or a mobile device. This is also what is known as responsive design. And it's making sure that your website is responsive no matter the width or the device that the user is viewing your website on. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. And I'm gonna show you how we can use these media queries. So just like any other CSS selector, we're going to introduce a new type called media. So we're gonna say for any media, and then we're going to use the curly braces. And then any styles that we want to have for our specific media query will go inside of here. So we can say that we want the media query to be a min, we'll say width of 600 pixels. So this is essentially saying that any styles inside of this will be run if the minimum width is 600 pixels or greater. So how about we just change up a little bit of styles? How about we change the welcome to my blog? Maybe we'll change the background of this to like a blue. So you'll see that we have the H1 right here. And typically you'll want to add your media queries to the bottom of your style sheet. So we'll say that if it is greater than 600 pixels, we want the color to be blue. So if we save that and we go back here and reload, you're gonna see that the color is blue. And I'm going to open up developer tools and show you something new inside of developer tools. You can see that we can actually click on this device toolbar. And if you click on that device toolbar, you can then have this kind of responsive layout right here that you can use, or you can actually choose like an iPhone X. So we can say this is what it would look like on an iPhone X, uh, and then all these different devices right here. So we could actually choose responsive, and then you can see that we can change it up just by dragging these left and right. So I'm actually going to zoom into the page a little bit more, and we'll open this up. And let me change that to 150. Okay, so now you can see that we have the width and the height right here, and as we get to 600 pixels, it then automatically turns blue, and anything greater than 600 is going to be blue. Again, if we go below 600, we're going to have our default purple. So you'll see in our style sheet, it is defined that the H1 has a purple background, but if we have a device width that is 600 pixels or greater, so the minimum width should be 600. Anything greater than that is going to run these CSS styles. So you can use min width, you can also use max width. And if you were to use max width, obviously that's going to change the way that this gets executed. So let's check this out. If we reload, you can see that it's blue right now, but then as we go down or as we go larger, you're gonna see that it's actually purple. So if we get under 600, then it is going to be blue. So typically you'll want to use min width because this is what is called a mobile first design. So mobile first means that if you were to strip out all of your media queries, the styles that should be left should be the styles that look good on a mobile device. But just go ahead and stick with a min width and I think that's kind of best practice. So we'll say for minimum width, we want 600 pixels. And you can see that as we go larger than 600 pixels, it is blue. So let's go ahead and change the column right here for our flex box. So remember we were talking in the last video about these posts right here. So you can see that the posts get kind of cluttered once you get to a small device. So maybe like around 600 pixels, we want them to stack on top of each other instead of right next to each other. So let's go ahead and add that to our media query. So right here we have our container and let's change the container styles for anything that's greater than 600 pixels. So if anything that's 600 pixels or greater, we want the flex direction to be row. So we're going to say by default, we want the flex direction to be column. So by default, like if there are no media queries, we're going to apply the mobile styles, which is going to be column, which is stacked on top of each other. Otherwise, if we're 600 and greater, we are going to use a row, which is going to make them stack right next to each other. So let's save that and let's reload this. And you're gonna see that we have our posts right next to each other. Then as we get to 600, you can see now that they're stacked on top of each other. 
And that's kind of just a better user experience if you are viewing this on your mobile device. As you scroll down, you can then click to view more about the posts. And then as you get to like a desktop or tablet view, you can see that they're right next to each other. So you can specify multiple breakpoints. Perhaps you want another one that's at, you could say 800 pixels or wider, then you want to apply certain styles. So maybe we want the, let's see, we have a box right here. Maybe we want the box to have a different color, anything that's 800 pixels or greater. So what we'll do is we'll just copy this and we'll say, if the width of the browser is greater than 800 pixels, we want the background color to be green. So if I were to save that and we reload, we can see that it's red and we're at 756 pixels. But if we were to make this larger than 800, it doesn't look like that worked. And let's see why that didn't work. So we have min width of 800 pixels, background 800. Let me see if I saved that. Okay, and that's actually because we did not have, uh, that wasn't actually applied for the box, that was an after link for the A. So let me go back up here and see where we had that. Yeah, this was actually the style that we wanted to change. And that would be why it wasn't working. So let's save that, go back here and reload. And we can see that we have that red box, but as we make it larger than 800, you can now see that it's green and less than 800 and it is red. So you can set multiple breakpoints for your site and make it responsive and change the design based on the width of the container. You can also specify one more thing, which is the orientation of the device that the user is viewing this on. So say if you're on like a phone or a tablet, you might have a, a landscape mode or po portrait mode. And typically whenever you're in landscape mode, that means that your width is wider than the height. So let me go ahead and show you how we can apply a few different styles for that. So again, we're going to use this at media and instead of min width, we're gonna say orientation and let's say landscape. Now I'm going to just add these styles right here. So we're going to make that box green if we are in landscape. So let's save this. Let's go back here and reload and you're gonna see that it is green. And that is because the width is larger than the height. So now if we were to change this and let's say that we make this more of like a portrait mode and we scroll down, you can see that it's red because we're actually not in landscape mode anymore. So you can do that with landscape. You can also do that with portrait if you wanted to have some specific styles for portrait mode, you can add those styles inside of this media query. So that is just a 101 on media queries. You'll definitely want to play around with them and get familiar with it because nowadays every site should be responsive and look good on mobile devices and desktop devices. They're pretty simple once you wrap your head around it and it can actually be kind of fun adding these different styles to your website based on the device that the user is viewing it on. So that's it for this video. I will see you in the next one where we'll be kind of putting all of this together and making our blog look quite a bit nicer. We'll be using some of the stuff that we've learned and I'll be showing you a few more new CSS and HTML things, but that's pretty much HTML and CSS in a nutshell. You'll want to start creating websites and you'll want to start learning more about all these different elements and these different properties and values that you can apply to CSS to make your websites look nicer.